Welcome to Film Scene, the show that takes you behind the scenes of our shoots at Creative Edge Productions. I'm your host, Tony Reale, Director of Photography, joined as always by our intrepid crew, Jimmy DeGroat, Creative Director, and Sean Bowers, Director of Post-Production. On the last episode of Film Scene, we showed you a project we work on in partnership with Department of Homeland Security and Public Safety Canada. This is a continuation from that project. Uh, as we talked about previously, we had done some emergency scenarios and we wanted to showcase them in their reality as, as real as possible for the budget we had and showcase the, the severity of them and why it was necessary to have a system for response for it. We contacted the police department to get permission to use the city block and we found a parking area. We got permission from the owners to park our equipment there so we could be out of the way of the road and we started unloading. Our dump truck arrived, which was going to be the main thing that ran into the oil tanker. Now, unfortunately, we actually weren't able to get an oil tanker for this. So Sean had to do all the digital effects that we'll show you later. Setting up for our first shot of the day was gonna be the shot of the explosion. And this is where the dump truck came crashing into the oil tanker towards the end of the video. We only had the dump truck for a little while, so we had to make sure we got all the shots of the dump truck out of the way right away. This is why it's good to have a good shot list and plan everything out. Jimmy was on the phone making sure that we had everything coordinated with the dump truck so we knew when to have him coming by and making sure we knew when to be rolling the camera. This shot was kind of a point of view shot from the oil tanker right as the dump truck was about to come crashing into it. I want to have the urgency and just the, the visual of the dump truck coming crashing in in those moments right beforehand. Now I do have a car mount, but it only works with smaller cameras and anytime that I have the choice to use my FS700 or a better camera, I will go with it. So we decided to stick the camera out of Jimmy's car. Fortunately, he had a sunroof, so we were able to use our Liebeck tripod and stick it right out the roof and get the proper height. And this actually worked well because of the height of the dump truck. It's such a tall vehicle that if we were any lower, we just wouldn't have the right perspective. Again, we were on the phone communicating with the dump truck, making sure that we were getting in the right position, making sure everything was lining up correctly. And when we were all ready to go, we hit record and the dump truck went backwards as we went backwards as well. This means that later on, we were able to play it in reverse and speed it up to look like it's just about to hit. This is a great technique for faking collisions where you don't have to be unsafe at all. That was our last shot with the dump truck and we were able to get on with the rest of the production. We did a nice little slide here on the pocket dolly just to add some movement to the shot. We wanted to get a variety of shots for the hero car and I wanted to rig up the camera mount. Now this only works with smaller cameras, but I have my NEX7 set up and ready to go. And we use that for several of the shots for the video, including plates. One major problem we ran into was the driver actually didn't see the puddle and ended up running into it and it got all over the camera and the lens. This was a new lens that I had just gotten and I didn't have time to get a UV filter. Of course, that's a mistake I won't do again, but we tried cleaning it out. Unfortunately, we still weren't able to get the dirt out of it and we had to send it back to Sony for repair. Fortunately though, we were able to get the shot and Sean was able to digitally add the tanker truck in later on. Another setup that we went through was the inside the car shot uh, showcasing right before the collision as well. I wanted to get a really cool uh, perspective of the driver, what he was seeing his point of view. Since Sean was digitally having to add the oil tanker later on, this is a great time for us to just do everything locked off with no camera movement and we were able to set up the camera right in the car. We used our Enduro hi-hat with a couple Apple boxes to get the camera at the right position. Then we used the pop-out green screen to position over the talent, which allowed us to key out around his hair and his arms. Since everything else was the hard line, Sean just rotoscoped the rest of the window out. Then we added the plate shot on the NAX7 and the digital version of the oil tanker. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see the entire video, visit the link below. And if you guys want to have Sean do a VFX breakdown on his entire digital workflow, leave a comment and let him know. I always think <laughs> that's ah! the announcer Jimmy. Look, I didn't drop the, the camera, the Jimmy. The